So, of course, over the last couple days, we've had a lot of things go on. And I just want to sit here and talk about some of the stuff. College football, that video game came out. Joe Biden and what the Democratic Party is doing. Ever since I last got on here, Donald Trump had an assassination attempt on his life. There's the Team USA exhibition games. There's a lot to talk about, and I will be talking about some of that today. But first, before we get into it, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Please help me out a little bit. Without further ado, let's get right into this video. Now, Joe Biden and the election. As we all know, Joe Biden dropped out. My reaction to that, I'm neither disappointed nor surprised. He's just too old. The guy has COVID. Apparently, he's been experiencing possible cognitive decline. I just don't see how he would have been able to do four more years if he did win the election. I don't see how he would have been able to do four more years as a president. It was clear that he was not as sharp and is not as sharp as he once was. And as of right now, the Republican Party is looking fairly strong at the moment. They have a strong candidate in Trump. They have all the attention seemingly in the world right now with the recent events that have been made or the recent threats and events that have uh, threatened Donald Trump's life. Uh, they look strong and they look fairly capable to a lot of people when it comes to leading the United States for the next four years. Granted, I am not a Trump supporter, nor do I identify with either side. I'm not 100% Republican. I'm not 100% Democrat, although I do lean to the left typically a little bit. So the question is, who's going to be the candidate to step in for Joe Biden? Well, that's a good question. That's a very interesting question and one that took a crazy amount of research to come up to. I, I had to do a lot of research for it, but these are the three candidates who I think are more than likely the best three candidates to step in in any position. President, vice president, whatever you would like to call it. First is the most obvious one. Kamala Harris is the obvious choice. She has the experience. She's seen what Joe Biden has been able to do for these last four years. She would be the first woman to ever be the president of the United States if she won. There's only one issue though. And it's got nothing to do with her policies or what she may believe in. I just don't know about her likability. There have been a lot of false things spread about her. There have been a lot of uh, people saying that she's not for black individuals, which is completely 100% false, by the way. There are a lot of people saying that she incarcerated thousands of men, which she did not. Only 45 men ended up being put in jail or prison for uh, their acts and what they committed and what they did as a result of her work. All of that stuff, whether true or untrue, is really, really, really having a huge impact on her likability. I'm just not sure if people are going to like her enough. And that is huge when we're talking about an election where cachet and likability and all that stuff is going to matter a lot. I'm very confident that she would be a capable leader, I may add. Now, going to my next guy, my favorite candidate, in my opinion, Gavin Newsom. From what I've researched, again, one of my favorite possible candidates. He's the governor of California. He's for human rights. He's for education. He's for civil rights. He's for expanding opportunities. And he wants more strict weapon control in the U.S., which in my opinion, as a guy that's been all around the globe, is something that needs to happen as fast as possible. He's also really, really popular and seems very likable. I think he could be your guy to win the election. I think he'll be your guy to do it. I think he has the cachet. I think he has a state that is key in the election, which is California, which is usually Democratic. But then again, anything can change. And California is the largest state in the United States when it comes to electoral votes. That is a major, major, major state to win. I'm really, really, really siding with Gavin Newsom. I am, again, I lean towards the left side. I enjoy some of the policies or, excuse me, I, uh, I, I like some of the policies that he would be willing to implement if he did become president. I like what he's doing as the governor of California. I think it's really good, and I agree with a lot of the things um, that he stands for. Now, going to our last possible candidate, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Now, he's running as an independent, and he has some interesting views, prioritizing peace, care for our environment. He wants to prioritize human rights and enact policies that favor small and medium-sized businesses and not just larger businesses. While I can say that I don't agree with everything that he said, because people, you know, people may think he's a conspiracy theorist and stuff like that. I don't agree with everything he said, but I do consider him a solid candidate. I would vote for him in the event that it's, you know, him versus Donald Trump or him versus a lot of other people in the race. I think he's an interesting candidate. Now, the only problem is that he's in the independent party, and I don't know if you're going to get enough people to vote independent, right? 
our government is mainly dominated by Republic and Democrat. And it's going to be really, really, really difficult to get a third party into that mix. If anything, that could just divide the vote. And I don't know if that's going to be good, uh, particularly for the Democratic Party during this election. I don't know if that's going to be good. But I do like RFK Jr. I don't blame anybody for voting for him. I think he's an absolutely fantastic candidate. Although Gavin Newsom is my favorite. I like Gavin Newsom better than I like all of the three for a multitude of different reasons. But, of course, Kamala Harris, they're saying that she's going to be the nominee. I'm trying to wait for the Democratic Convention in Chicago to really confirm that. But they're saying she's going to be the nominee. If she's the Democratic nominee, she has my vote. I have trust in her. I think she could be a very capable leader. Now, getting into more less serious topics, I'm going into Team USA and their exhibition games. Now, Team USA beat the former FIBA champion Germany in their final exhibition game to finish 5-0 and in total before the Olympics have started. There are a couple things that you need to note from watching these five games. One is that LeBron James, when he needs to be, even at 40 years old, is still easily the best player on the planet. It's completely unprecedented. It's unexplainable how a man who is that old, who's been playing for that long, who has that much mileage on his knees and his feet and his legs can still be this good. But LeBron James is making it all possible. It's absolutely fantastic. I am so, so, so eager to see what he's able to do in the Olympics, man. It's incredibly impressive. And I'm happy to be alive and see it. I'm seeing him break the score record, seeing him get 40,000, 10,000, and 10,000 plus. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. Now, our second note is, guys, we can't expect constant 50-point blowouts to these international teams anymore. We can't do that. International talent has become vastly better than it was back in even the 90s and even the early 2000s. It's just vastly better. It's a lot more competitive. You cannot expect the United States to just walk in and blow out international teams anymore. It's going to be a competitive setting. There are going to be very, very competitive games. There are teams that are really, really, really good, and we have to expect them to be able to at least keep up with our Team USA. Now, does that mean we should not win? Absolutely not. Team USA should absolutely dominate. They're going to be dominant. They're going to be the best team there, and that shouldn't be surprising. Now, as far as winning games by 50, probably not. Not that kind of nomination. But winning games by 10, even 20 points, I think that's a more fair and more accurate expectation. And then for our last one, the United States needs to figure out a true starting lineup. Now, personally, this is what I think the starting lineup should look like. And hear me well. Steph Curry at the point, Kevin Durant at the two, LeBron at the three, Bam at the 4, and AD at the 5. With, of course, everybody else coming off the bench, and I think Anthony Edwards should actually be the star 6 man coming off the bench. Now, Team USA looks to be adjusting overall, but you can't really complain, right? They went 5-0 and as a team and uh, with the record so far. The next game is against Serbia in the real Olympics on July 28th. It's going to be really interesting. It's going to be incredibly fun to watch. I am absolutely ecstatic that the olympics are coming up they're going to be so many videos so much content on tiktok instagram reels uh, if you guys haven't been able to get to that then i have that link all in my description all those links in my description so please feel free after you subscribe to the channel go to the tiktok go to the instagram and support your boy up a little bit but nonetheless this team usa team is going to be really good i'm eager to see what's going to happen once they kind of apply a permanent starting lineup and kevin durant comes back and we see what the team looks like in their first real olympic contest but of course going into my last topic of the day it's college football 25 everyone has been asking me what in the world do i think about it it's fantastic as you can see my wonderful xbox controller here i have been playing that game a lot ladies and gentlemen a lot and what i can say is that ea sports absolutely did their thing they cooked with this game now the game is our state arcade style excuse me i'm sorry um, it means essentially scoring is at a at a very very plentiful rate and defending is very 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 difficult now if you love offense which i would think most casual football fans do you're going to enjoy this game but if you're more of a realistic football fan, you want games to end in like 20 to 7. If you want if you want a realistic experience, a super realistic experience, this game isn't going to be as fun to you. Now, adding on, teams like Georgia, Oregon, and Colorado are 
completely overpowered on offense. And Georgia's overpowered on both sides of the ball, which is great for me because your Brody happens to be a Georgia fan. As you can see with the background, your guy's a pretty big Atlanta fan. And, of course, you got the little Aggie pride flag up there. But your boy's a big Atlanta fan. I'm from Atlanta. I've loved Georgia ever since I first laid eyes on them. I love the team, and it's really good for me. But they are completely overpowered in the game. Now, a lot of people also want to know about Road to Glory. Road to Glory, in my opinion, is fantastic. I haven't been able to stop playing. You can basically go to any school you want and be a starter within your first season, depending on the positions and your builds and all that kind of stuff. And there's GPA, there's NIL deals, there are ranked games, the new playoff format, championships, uh, they have the Heisman Trophy. They have all of the awards like Doak Walker and stuff like that. The whole nine. It's a very realistic and good experience. And I really, really enjoy playing it. Now, I also heard that the coaching and rebuilding mode is very, very good too. Although I have not tried it. But you better believe that I'm going to go in and I'm going to rebuild NCAT. And we're going to be national champions, at least in the video game. I'm going to rebuild NCAT. See, I've got my hoodie here. I've got my flag right there like there there's a lot a lot of pride for my school man i would love i would have loved to see him in the game in real life but i understand it's just so many teams that can go in so many conferences that you can put into the game that a lot of people know about so i understand that and i can just put him into the game myself but nonetheless it's an absolutely fantastic game defense is low-key sus and the tackling animations can get better and we do need a couple updates to fix some of the bugs but overall, this is EA's best football game that they've put out in half a decade, easily. It's absolutely fantastic, and I really, really do enjoy it. But of course, of course, that's going to end this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Help me out a little bit. Without further ado, I'm going to end this video. I wish you nothing but the best. Stay loved. Stay blessed. Thank you for watching.